Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a really intriguing Mussorgsky disc. It contains yet another orchestration of pictures in an exhibition. You know, there are like a billion of those. I, I, I took a look on Wikipedia, which you should all do because, you know, God invented Wikipedia to make people who don't know anything seem smart. And even, even those of us who pretend to know things like myself, we need Wikipedia. So Wikipedia lists something like 26 orchestrations of pictures in an exhibition. For symphony orchestra alone, I mean, there are band arrangements, there's all kinds of other stuff. But the one I'm talking about is this one. The orchestration is by Peter Breiner. Now, Peter Breiner is sort of the Naxos house orchestrator slash composer. He did those really terrific discs of Janicek opera suites, and he's done quite a bit else besides, some of which I've liked, some of which I haven't liked, but he has done an orchestration of pictures in an exhibition. But that's not the thing that makes the disc so interesting. What makes the disc so interesting is the additional orchestrations as sort of four movement suites or five movement or six movements, depending on how many there are, of the two song cycles, the nursery and the songs and dances of death. If you don't want to hear someone shouting at you in Russian, but you love the music and the music is wonderful and Mussorgsky's melodies are so personal and intriguing, these are great. I mean, these are just great. It's wonderful to have the music with no voices at all. It works quite well in these arrangements. What doesn't work so well is pictures in an exhibition. Yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Briner, but he's a very talented guy, but this picture is a you know, deal. I actually think it's intriguing. I mean, I would get the disc for the two song cycles when the picture's a sort of a whopping quasi bonus, but what is the problem with this arrangement? Well, the problem with this arrangement is that, first of all, it's just way overdone. It really is. Briner does not like to leave anything without something interesting to listen to. So, for example, if there's a simple chord that Mussorgsky's holding, you know, he'll throw in harp or pigeons or piano filigrees or, you know, there's, there's, there's too much going on when the music demands simplicity. The other problem with all orchestrations beyond Ravel's is that Ravel's is simply so good and so many of his choices are so inevitable that most of the other ones sound like bad Ravel. I mean, to the extent, to the extent they do what Ravel does, they sound good. And to the extent they don't, they sound like they're making a mistake. And it's really a problem because we can't get the Ravel out of our heads. There's no point in even trying because it's just the best thing out there hands down. I mean, yes, there are some others that people like. There's the Gorchakov one that Mazur was pushing, and Stokowski, of course, did one, and and there was Leo Funtek that was on BIS, and then there was, there's I think Henry Wood did one, and, 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 and Vladimir Ashkenazi did one, but they, they, Ravel is just the one. It's really a work by Ravel as much as it is by Mussorgsky, and it's Fabulous. So we all know that. Well, let me just tell you what the real problem is with this performance by Briner. It's slow as molasses. It takes over 40 minutes, which is completely insane. Even if you include all the movements, you know, delete a promenade here or there. It's just crazy how slow this thing is. I mean, lethally dull. The Old Castle, which is actually a beautiful orchestration, especially when the tune goes, I think, the solo trumpet or something. It's very beautiful. Uh, that's one of the livelier numbers in the way Briner conducts it. He conducts like Bernard Herrmann did, you know, just at lethally slow tempos, maybe so he can enjoy all the cool orchestration. And some of it is enjoyable. I, I, I grant that. I really do. But, you know, there's a beautiful promenade that begins with solo strings it's, it's, it's exquisite, and it's a lesson in its simplicity because it really works well, but the rest of it, oh, it just, it just dies. I want to play you a little bit of The Great Gate of Kiev towards the end, and you can hear just how slow and heavy this thing is. Oh, my goodness. It's the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, Pity the Brass Section, and conducted by Peter Briner, as I said, on Naxos. Here is a bit of The Great Gate of Kiev. Oh, it's just dire.
yeah. It's like, go through the gate already. Come on, get moving. <laughs> go through the gate. Anyway, but that's not why you get the disc. Who cares about pictures at an exhibition? However much work Mr. Briner put into it, those song cycles are wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I'm going to play you two lovely samples. The first is the, the Trepak from Songs and Dances of Death. Here's a good chunk of it. I, I just love these pieces. The songs are magnificent. They really are. And the tunes are vintage, vintage Mussorgsky. And, you know, he wrote them originally for voice and piano. Lots of people orchestrated them. Shostakovich did, Markevich did, with singers. But this is without singers, and you can just enjoy the tunes. It's fabulous. Here's a bit of the trepak. Isn't that great? Isn't that just, I, I mean, I just think that's wonderful. And I think, frankly, you know, all is forgiven from pictures in an exhibition because because Peter Breiner did these two song cycles. I just find them absolutely mesmerizing. And the other one is, is, is In the Corner from the Nursery. I'll play you the whole song because it's short. It's only a minute and 48 seconds long. You can listen to the whole bit. It's a miniature masterpiece, especially in this arrangement. This is just great, too. And I, 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 it will allow you to discover these pieces, pieces that are absolutely vintage, top-notch Mussorgsky that most people would never listen to otherwise. And that's such a shame. But now maybe they will listen to it more. So here is In the Corner from The Nursery.
terrific stuff, isn't it? So I'm not going to belabor this. Um, there's no reason to go on at length. This is simply a halfway fabulous disc that's worth getting for the halfway fabulous part the two song cycles. And I think you'll probably have fun listening to what Briner does with pictures in an exhibition. If only he'd sped it up. Then I could just bitch about the orchestration, but not about the conducting. And, you know, what can I tell you? It is what it is, and some of it is just wonderful. So keep on listening, folks. Thanks for joining me. Take care.